And I know I said this before I hit the record button, but I need to publicly acknowledge uh, how thrilled I am, how excited I am that we do this every other week and you keep coming back for more. It drives me to uh, enjoy this time together. It this keeps me on. Uh, this keeps me fresh and in the game, so I know what's going on, and very much engaged with your business. Some of you engage me more than others, which is fine. Uh, the fact that you come here and you take what you need, or you, or, or some of you ask specific questions, and some of you send emails. So I'm saying this because. Uh, two people in particular had reached out to me. Elaine had reached out saying that uh, she's she's ready to put a group agreement letter together. But uh, what what are the elements? How, where do you start? How does it how does it work? And and I know it's in boot camp, but I'm so glad you reached out to me, Elaine. So we we communicated a bit and made sure that you had sort of that sample. But what I sent you was was sort of that which is in boot camp, which is a list of every possible element you could put in in, a, in an agreement letter and I'm sure there are others I didn't think of but I'm always trying to to think of everything based on your feedback and, and our experience and I will ask all the group here if you have a group agreement letter a real one that you've used that either was signed or not signed we don't care and if you want to change the names to protect the innocent let's send it wouldn't it be great to have a little bit of a library of your real group contracts with with group leaders so we can showcase it for others every group agreement letter will be different but the single most important thing is that you write it in collaboration with the group leader because it's there to hold not only them accountable but you accountable to them that's why it works beautiful when it's done collaboratively and in my, you know, unless it's a complex group, I think you can get away with an agreement letter versus a contract, um, which may require an attorney, especially if it's fundraising, if there's money changing hands, you know, if it's a large group, uh, you, you, you'll you know if, if it's a high risk and you need more of an attorney's contract versus my, my six point, my six, really, it breaks it down into six buckets of an agreement letter. So Elaine is going to continue sharing with us on that. And then I received an email from Sherry, who's on. And, and Sherry has graciously agreed that she's going to put her microphone on shortly, and we're going to hear Sherry's story. And I want to get all of your, your all's feedback, because I bet you this has all happened to each and every one of you. You get that call. Hi, we've got a group. We need pricing right away. When's the last time you've gotten that call? Every, all, all, all the time, right? And how many of those groups actually come to fruition? A percentage of them is probably what you're saying. Some do, some don't. But, but key, but you know, the thing that got me distressed was the rush, okay, right away. And, and prices, prices, prices. That scares me because We'll talk about this in a minute, but if that's all they're interested in, it's price, price, price. Well, guess what? They're just going to look at your number, which is the same number they're going to get if they go online, and they're going to get 42,000 other places. And so why would they hire you? They're probably, you know, I'm just saying, what if they just want to see, well, can my travel agent come up with a lower price? And and folks, if we get in that ball game of price, 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 we will always lose. We may get the group. But we may end up losing money because there's no extra margin. There's no extra markup. And here's the biggest thing of all. Forget about our profits, friends. Sherry and I talked about this yesterday. They're going to come back disappointed. Why? Because they ended up spending more when they got there. They didn't know. You had to pay for this. You had to wait online for this. Boy, I could have booked this in advance. Man, I wish I had booked an outside company. So they, they make big mistakes, these people. And that's your job is to save them is to rescue them. And as my great buddy, Mike Marshev says all the time, there's two kinds of people in the world, those you can help and those you can't. And sometimes we can't help them and we try our best to help those who are open to being helped. But we're gonna dig in and we're gonna have Sherry tell her story. Let me get back and say the good mornings. Carolyn is in the house. I'm glad you're here as well. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I have two comments here from Lori as well. I'm gonna read them from Facebook. Uh, let's see. Wakisa is in the house. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're here. John is here. Hello, John. John, I'm going to follow up with you. We'll see if we can get together. Uh, Carolyn said, 
uh, what are your thoughts on LinkedIn sales navigator for leads? We're going to get to that in a minute. That's a great question. I know very little about that, but we'll talk about it. And Nancy says, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, okay. John has a comment. Gina says, happy Thursday. By the way, there's some uh, celebratory stuff here. We're celebrating two years of group boot camp. Two years of group boot camp. So I'm very excited. The month of February. I don't know what that means, what that looks like, but but it's celebrating two years. I'm very happy. Uh, okay, we've got lots of comments here. Jan's in the house. Molly's in the house, and you have been here in a while. I'm so glad you're back. Uh, Jan says, "Good morning. Great to see you today. Can't wait to hear what the brave ones have to say." I know, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back to make sure I don't miss anything. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, Sherry, I'm going to ask you, you tell me if you're ready to have your microphone turned on. So I'm going to watch to see if you comment, Sherry, and you tell me yay or nay about this. Judy says, happy anniversary to you. Thank you. And to us, indeed. Happy anniversary because there's some of you who have been here from the very beginning. And I'm so excited. Okay, so Sherry says yes. So hold on, everybody. Uh, Sherry, I'm going to give you a microphone on request. Uh, so just bear with me here as I do as I do that because it's it's a little tiny unmute Sherry. All right, Sherry, are we coming in loud and clear? Yes, I can hear you. How is everyone uh, today? You know what? I think everybody is so delighted and elated that you have the courage to put your microphone on. So we did have a conversation you and I yesterday. Get, give us the highlights of of what's going on, stuff that's going to resonate with your with your. Uh, your fellow boot campers about groups. And then, and then we're going to have some, uh, I'm going to sort of repeat some of the stuff we talked about yesterday and some new thinking too, and get some feedback from the agents. You're on. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to preface this by saying I'm a pretty new agent just a few years in, and I've done a couple of small groups of, you know, like four rooms, you know, sort of thing. I've done a group of six rooms, but um, anyway, I had a, a friend and a neighbor, um, call me yesterday and saying that they want to do a family reunion on a cruise. Um, and they have about 30 people. Um, but she wasn't clear yet on how, how many rooms they need. So I still don't know that information just yet, but, um, the, her husband has a very large family. So anyhow, um, she, she wanted to know about pricing for this cruise. Uh, they're, you know, they give me, okay, Florida maybe, or maybe LA, uh, maybe Boston. And then, and then she said, well, somebody's asking about, uh, what about, uh, Alaska? So the, the contingency, I know. So, okay, well, we could do Alaska. I did that last summer. So I, I have some good knowledge about that. But, um, she was saying that there are uh, a couple of people that are unemployed in her family that they're going to, they're trying to, you know, find something. That is, um, sorry. <laughs> of course, the right. phone blows up whenever. You know. <laughs> um, <sorry. laughs> hey, Anyhow. this is live. This is live TV. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so, anyhow, they. Um, so they needed something that could go inexpensive, you know. And you know, generally, I did say Alaska is not probably not the way to go if you want to do that because it's more expensive than Caribbean and such. But anyhow, they were like, well, how much? Okay, <laughs> well, here we go. So I did some searching yesterday and going through Royal Caribbean and Carnival and, um, you know, anyhow, and I kind of was like, I'm, I'm going to throw this number out there, but just know that it very well may change until you get that, you know, deposit down it, it everything is up in the air. Anyhow, so I gave him a number and, She's like, okay, I'll go back to everybody and see if that's something they want to do. So, uh, so that's kind of where we were. Uh, we left it tomorrow or uh, yesterday afternoon and uh, I haven't gotten in back in touch with her today just yet. But, um, basically I've never done, um, any kind of a group contract. I, I really, that kind of feels overwhelming to me. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, a lot of this, I've gone through most of the boot camp, just all the, the things on the, on the website, but it's, I, I, I've been struggling just with feeling overwhelmed by the whole idea of all that. <laughs> so. okay. All right. Thank you very much for sharing. Keep, keep your mic on for just a, a, another, another minute or two, because for, I just want to tell you and everybody else, 
the, the, the group process is a process and, and it, it occurs in various stages. Right now, Terry, you're, you're not near the group agreement letter part. You're not near the, the sales part, the group launch sequence, all this kind of part. So while it's easier said than done, as I say these words to you, to take a deep breath and to realize where you're at in the process. You're at the very early stage in the process where you have a bite, you have a nibble, you have a, a lead, basically. Mm -hmm. And 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 way I would encourage you and others to look at this when, because you, your words, original words to me were, a group just dropped in my lap. Well, an opportunity did. It, it, if they dropped into your lap, they would have dropped in your lap with a check made payable to Sherry, done <laughs> deal. All yeah. right? So the opportunity did, which, of course, you're grateful for. It is, we, we need these kinds of things. But uh, to so let's not think ahead. Right now, we've got this group, and you've given me more, more information. You're not sure if they have uh, traveled together as a group because that's very important. Uh, they This is somebody who you know who has a little bit of history who in the past has asked you for a quote and some pricing, you've done some research and they ended up booking it themselves or direct or whatever. Right. Uh, not a group, right? Right, not a group. Uh, little history. Uh, and and the fact that they're in a, in, a, in a big rush, they just want price, they just want numbers right away, fast, 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 and it's going to happen this year. And, and then you also have people, some people are out of work, yet somebody wants to go to Alaska. So, you, you know, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big mess right now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and here's what I, I'd like to say to you and to everybody else, because you're going to get these, these opportunities all the time. Take control, slow down the process. Uh, and if they don't want, don't allow you to take control and slow down the process, and I'll tell you how, then move on. Because Sherry, you also told me that you've put hours into research coming up with numbers of different products and the truth of the matter is you know absolutely nothing about the needs of this group you're just getting it through one person and you just uh you're getting bits and pieces so what's got to happen i believe and this is where we picked it up yesterday is take control and say we need it sounds like you guys are in a big rut yes great well, I'm willing to drop everything, give you my time, but I don't just give price points because if you want a price point, you've already got 42,000 places to get prices, all right? And 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 if you want to book it that way, a group that way, you can, but you're going to come back very unhappy. Well, what do you mean? Well, because when it comes to a group, it's a lot more intricate than booking an individual vacation. Well, what do you mean? Well, because you're going to get there and half the people are going to be very happy. Half the people are going to be unhappy and you're going to forget to, you're going to miss stuff. You're going to forget to do all the stuff that you, you didn't even know you could do. And you're going to end up spending a ton more money. That's why you think you're getting a deal, but it's not going to be a deal. So let's get on the phone. Let's, let's create a, a, a free conference call.com meeting. Whoever you come to the phone, I've got questions. I, 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 you know, giving you a price point is, is going to do nobody good because I guarantee you're going to find it for a buck cheaper down the block, but you're going to come back grossly unhappy. And my clients, I don't let my clients come back unhappy. You get on that call and it's, and, and this is the, uh, it, this is the qualifying part, right? What have you done this before? I mean, for all you know, right, they could be Ritz Carlton a Ritz Carlton family, or they could be a Motel 6 family. You also told me they have little kids too. Well, why do they want to bring little kids to Alaska, especially if that's the family that's out of work? Like there's so many, right, Sherry? There's so much confusion. So I feel your pain right now. You're excited and it's a friend. Um, and I, I want to give a couple of other tips here, but I want to see if there's, if there's uh, anything else you thought of before I turn your mic off. Um, that you want to share? Anything else come to mind? And and I guess the big question is, after I uh, coached you yesterday, say, uh, uh, w would you ask them to jump on a call? It, have you done it? It's just something that you feel you can do. Yeah, probably. Um, 
Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that, you know, the first thing they asked me is, can you, uh, can you match Costco? <laughs> Yep. And I'm like, so actually, I yesterday I just did an experiment. I actually went on Costco's website. I pulled up mm -hmm. their cruises. I found the cruise that uh, they were talk, you know, that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, it said five ninety nine per person or whatever. And I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. uh, that's not what I saw. But when I actually pushed a button and followed through with it, it actually was not five ninety nine a person. Mm -hmm. uh, that the availability probably for that price was gone, you know, but they still leave it there. <laughs> of course. Yep. Anyhow, um, I found that to be an interesting uh, little task that I went through yesterday just to, yep. um, you know, just to play the devil's advocate and so on. So, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. And anyhow, and I'm glad you shared that too. And before I, 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 I put your uh, mic back on mute, uh, I, I think every agent out there, every one of your colleagues out there shaking their head saying, oh, this happens to me all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe the opportunity uh, to bypass that, to beat that, is to do groups. Why? Because, as you know, Sherry and everybody else in boot camp, I tell you, we can't be selling the off-the-shelf, bare-bone, stripped-down product because you know in your heart of hearts that if you do match that price, if and, and, and as you said, most of the time it's not even available. And it's the, you know, it's always the, it is the bottom of the barrel pricing. It's, you know, it's not even an inside stateroom that you get a closet with a vertical bed. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wouldn't that be crazy? Uh, That's what they're doing on the airlines these days. I know. It's the first thing I thought of, too. I mean, soon there's going to be ultra discomfort class. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, craziness. In any case, uh, uh, in, in your heart of hearts, you know, you, you know, they're going to come back so unhappy and they're going to end up spending so much more when they get there. Uh, and, and the truth is you, you don't want to have clients come back and, and be angry at you because here you are, you do, you did what they asked and you gave back money. And you, if you were to count how many hours you put into this, you ended up losing money and they come back angry. Yeah. Wait a minute. You did what I asked. You wanted the the bare bones price I gave it to you. And now you're disappointed. Well, yeah, because I think that's the role a travel agent plays today. A travel agent has to be bigger, better, and um, much more astute to the needs of the client and to have the, the courage also to say, I can't help you. Go ahead and book it on Costco. And after you see all the things that go wrong, and now listen, I wish you well. I mean that, you're my friend. Then your next one, you'll come back and, you, you, and you'll use me. But I can't convince you of anything else, So, and I'm not going to give, give you that. I got to go. Do you know how powerful it is when a, when a business, when a company says, can't help you. I won't do that. That's, mm -hmm. that's you know, very powerful. All right. Any other comments? I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to fire out a couple of uh, tips and stuff and see what everybody else has to say. Thanks, Stuart. All right, Sherry. Hang on there. I'm going to put you back on mute. Da, 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 mute Sherry. All right. Oh, that was so cool of Sherry to be on. So here's the thing. So, uh, yes. So number one, uh, and, and, you know, the more I talk with Sherry, we got more information here that this person also uh, ha has just gotten information and ended up booking direct. So why wouldn't this person end up doing it again? Uh, I just really think that sometimes we're, we're as agents, you are being used just as a, hey, I'll check with my agent and then we'll go price it. You're like a benchmark, right? And so the goal is, can, can let, let's, how, are, how many calls can we make till we find somebody to beat it? Sherry also said that they asked her how much she charges and she charges X amount of dollars per head. For the booking, which is what you probably charges as a service fee for individuals that applied it to groups. So I suggested to Sherry, you go back and say, listen, when it comes to groups, uh, for, first of all, number one, you got to jump on a call. If this is urgent, immediately, because you need to ask a lot of questions. You're not going to, uh, you know, come up with 400,000 different price points if you don't know what the people need. And you specialize in giving what the people need and a family reunion and get them nervous, Sherry, get them nervous that a family reunion is very complex. Why? Because you've got different age groups. You've got people who don't normally travel together, who have different expectations. So you're, 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 you, you do your homework 
like any good business person to make sure you deliver the right experience. You have to say your product. They're not going to get product. The right experience. So everybody has, excuse me, Ms. Jones, don't you want everybody to have a good time? Well, yes. Well, you've got to give me access to the people. I need to hear what they want and what they don't want where they've been, where they want to go, or else we're all wasting our time. Okay, and num number two, uh, I, I would say, listen, you know what? I told you I charge a per-person fee. Forget that. Don't worry about paying me a fee. But what I need you to do is give me permission to give you a package because I only create packages for my groups. Do I have your permission? And if she says, well, what does that mean? Well, that means, that means I'm going to create a package. I'm going to be able to negotiate and, and in advance, book the stuff that you're going to end up paying for when you get there. It's going to cost you more, but you're going to give me leverage now because now I can negotiate because we've got bigger numbers, but I'm going to give you a package price. It's not going to be a stripped down bare bones price. Go book it on Costco if you want that. Then you're going to come back and say, I, I, it's going to be, and I told you so. Okay. And so you, you've got to get the next part. First, the meeting, then the permission to package. And if any point in this area they say no, then you say no. I got to go. Bye. I've got other clients I need to deal with. And, you know, so much can go wrong with your family reunion. Uh, I'll take care of your next year's one. But this year, and, and, and also Sherry told me why the event, it, it's, a, it's a 50th wedding anniversary too. So they may want special events on board, private stuff on board. And it could be at a resort. I'm not assuming it's on a ship. So that's number two. And number three, you know, after you have all the information so that you know, should it be an all-inclusive resort that has activities for kids and for grandparents? Should it be the Ritz-Carlton of resorts or should it be the Motel Sixes of resorts? Should it be a Crystal Cruise or should it be Carnival? In, in, if, 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 if truly, if everyone goes to Alaska, you know, this Alaska request could have come from one person. And those people are out of work unless they've got... They're very, very wealthy and they can afford to go to Alaska still while being unemployed. Well, God bless them. It's beautiful. But we don't know that. Right. So. So step one, you got to have that conference call. Take control. Step. Step two. Um, get permission to package. Step three, you're going to follow my pitch perfect plan and you're going to get them back on the phone and make a pitch. All right. You're going to say, listen, everybody, this is this is the, and these are the decision makers. Uh, before you even reveal uh, the, you know, you're not going to open up for sale just yet. You're going to talk to the decision makers and you say, look, I've created a package. Here's the, here's the particulars of the package, you know, uh, and here's what you said you don't want. You're not getting. Here's what you say you wanted. Here's what you're getting. And look, I built all this stuff in. Now, yeah, you want to prices against Costco? Hands down. I'm more expensive. But you're going to come back to, you know, again, I don't have to repeat myself and you, you'll, you'll prove to them why your package is far superior than anybody else's low discount price point. And then you're going to do a group launch sequence. Now, I know in this case, it's a family reunion and you may not have to do it over multiple days. Maybe you can do one meeting, one presentation, either on the phone or use uh, maybe an, a, a, another free resource that like go to webinar. But one of those other ones we've always talked about, Zoom, there's so many others that allow you to do this kind of a presentation. And, and, but, but you do this, you just follow the same principles of the group launch sequence, the same principles, which is you, you have one day where you open up for sale. And if you want to do the VIP day before those decision makers who, who gave you the approval, yes, we like this package, then that's great. But, you know, I follow the plan. Friends, look, I know when you get, when you get an opportunity drops in your lap, we get excited. And the client puts pressure, pressure, pressure. Let me give you a case in point. My daughter got engaged yay, over the holiday season. And uh, they're, they're, she's working on now getting price quotes from caterers. They have a date in mind or a time period in mind. And, and I was talking to Danielle last night and she said to me, Dad, uh, this one caterer said that she's got two other people lined up for this date. And so she needs an answer immediately. And I said, Danielle? it's either she's telling you the truth that she's got two other people who could end up taking that date and you won't get this caterer or it's not true. It's a tactic. It's a technique. It's a high pressure thing. So you stop looking around and book it. 
And as far as I'm concerned, Danielle, if she's the caterer, if she's meant to be, she'll be meant to be. But you can't make a rash decision. You can't let yourself fall prey to that kind of pressure. And the same goes for you guys as business people. Don't let them put that pressure on you. Because if, if they're truly that kind of a group, those kind of people where it's high pressure and, and it, that high pressure stays, that it's going to drive you crazy. You don't want them as clients. But I'm telling you, they're coming to you to take over, to take control, to run it so they don't have to. And you could tell them, listen, don't you want somebody to blame should something go wrong? Write that down. Don't you want somebody to blame should something go wrong? I'm your person, Sherry. You look at me. This is what I do for a living. I'm so confident nothing's going wrong. That's why I can say that. But if, if you're going to book Costco for this, who are you going to get there? You're going to get a different, you're going to get one in 50. And don't get me wrong. At Costco, I, I never, ever book travel to Costco, but I buy refrigerators and dishwashers and my eggs from Costco. But, but I wouldn't book a vacation personally from them. Naturally, I could get one of 20,000 people. I don't know if I ever need help. So that, that's the path I would go by. But the biggest thing, friends, is that, yes, it's exciting when a lead drops in your lap like that. But you need to take control and qualify. And I, Sherry, all I'm looking to do is, and, I, you know, and, I, and I, for all of you, I, I say this in a very loving way, okay, with all due respect, is that I don't want you guys to be taken. I don't want you guys to waste your time. I don't want you guys to... Um, to get all excited, to put money down on a group, to find out, you know, one of their sister-in-law's, brother-in-law's aunt, second cousin, twice removed, is an agent too. Or they just booked it online. They just used you. I don't like hearing my friends have been used. So if they don't allow you to take control, then let it go. And I'm going to end it there, that if they don't allow you to take control, then let it go. Uh, and, and I hope that was more inspiring, not threatening, but every minute, you know, your most valuable commodity or asset is time. Those hours that you spent on shopping those prices could be entirely moot. If you do get on the phone, you find out they can't afford Alaska. They can't go away for seven days. They're going to be fine with a four night down in Mexico, all inclusive. You know, and none of these things are mistakes, Sherry. I don't think you've made any mistakes. But you're a relatively new agent. And the only way we learn is by doing, by taking action and sometimes making mistakes. And there's a bazillion quotes I can give you about failing. And I'm not saying you failed, but I'm just saying it's all about learning better methods. So the second time it drops in your lap, you know, you'll, you know what I'm saying? You shorten that, that, that time. Uh, that it takes you to figure out what method, what strategy to use. All right. Uh, before uh, before I go to the boards, I just want to read this from Lori, who posted this on, on Facebook, um, because I, this was kind of neat. Uh, so I was at a networking meeting the other evening. Have, did you guys see this on Facebook? And someone said that something resonated with me. Uh, she was a realtor that I've changed uh, changed to a travel agent. And this realtor friend had said to Lori, don't act like a poor travel agent. In other words, don't look desperate for the work. Clients will have more confidence in you. And I think this is relevant to our conversation right here. I think it's, it's commendable and it's one thing, Sherry, and all of you sometimes get these opportunities and you, you drop it. Everything else, and you, you run into action because you want to help because, they, they, you know, they're in a, in, in a hyped up, frenzied mood, and that's commendable. But it's also important to slow down the process on your own terms, to take control, to show them that you, it's your job to manage this and to do it with extraordinary confidence and not let them beat you down. Lower price, different price, check this, how much this. You see what I'm saying? And, and Sherry, I'm not insinuating at all that you didn't do this with confidence. My guess is you did. But I think the more we can step up and say, hang on, it ain't going to work like that. Now, I'm from New York, so I can get away with staying, saying stuff like that. It ain't going to work like that. Well, what do you mean? No, no, no. I'm not just going to shoot you over 200 price points. That's a waste of my time and a waste of yours because you've already got the lowest prices. 
You've already got that, right? Well, yeah. Okay, so what are you wasting my time for? I don't want to waste your time or my time. I'm in the business of putting together group trips uh, that, that number one, add value and convenience. Number two, reduce risk and stress. And number three, just transform the whole experience from good to great. That's what I'm in the business doing. Want to hire me to do that? I'll do it for you. See it with a big smile. Lots of confidence. All right. Now, Laurie made another comment we're going to get to in just a second, but let me check the boards here. And some of you may have made comments on here, so bear with me. And I wish you guys could see what everyone is typing, but crazy enough, go to webinar doesn't allow that. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, uh, Carolyn says, uh, what are your thoughts on using LinkedIn Sales Navigator for leads? Now, Carolyn, full disclosure, I have no idea. I have no thoughts on it because I've never used it. I'm unfamiliar with it. However, I think next week is a phenomenal opportunity for this question. Why? Because we've got Margie Jordan. Do you know Margie? I know Margie. She's a dynamo and she's dynamite with social media, social marketing. And she's also, she's an agency owner too. So she does what you do. So I think, Carolyn, I don't know if you could be with us next Thursday, ask the same question. If you can't, I'll make sure I ask it and we'll get you answers. I don't know. Great question. First thing I'll tell you, just like if a client asks you a question, you have an answer. I don't know, but I'll find out. Okay. Uh, hello, Nancy's in the house. Uh, John. Okay, next question from John. Question, I feel uncomfortable at times reaching out to affinity groups. I feel more comfortable at networking events, meeting and building relationships. However, this hasn't gotten as many groups. What is the best way to get past my un uncomfortness when I'm not sure what to say? Excuse me. I think that's a, that's a great question, John. And, and I think what I have found over the years is that most travel, most travel professionals do it for the love of travel. They don't do it because they're exceptionally great at sales and they pick travel to sell. Let me say that again. In my 30 years now in this wonderful industry, the majority of the most successful travel professionals, first and foremost, they do it for the love of travel because they have a real passion for it. And part two is that they it's something that is developed their ability to sell now i don't like to call it selling because if it makes you shiver when you hear the word selling then um th then you you won't you won't make those phone calls you won't send out those cards you won't try to help people I, because selling sales is, is a daunting word it's a daunting concept to so many of us Here's what I would say. John, the fact that you are comfortable, you enjoy going to networking events, you enjoy meeting people, that's more than half the battle. Love them or not, Woody Allen said once, 80% of success is showing up. 80% of success is showing up. So by getting up, getting out, you're doing more than most other people are doing. And as long as you're making friends out there, then you have the opportunity to influence, right? How to make friends and influence people. And John, I truly believe the best way how to end up getting group business is not by trying to making, make sales calls and finding prospects per se, but it's by doing exactly what you're doing, going to networking meetings, meeting people, and being more interested in them. Let them ask, hey, what do you do? And you can tell them, not the, not not your title, not your position, but whatever it is you do to transform people's lives. That's what they want to hear. So, uh, but but more importantly, learn about them. What do you do? How do you do it? Really fascinating. Could we meet privately for coffee? And you you if if you've been a boot camp a while, you guys know what I'm going to say. It's all about asking the right questions. If they don't reveal a problem. But asking and listening for a problem in the organization. And the problem could be, well, it's our 20th anniversary. We want to do a big uh, corporate celebration. Or, well, we have an award ceremony every year and we don't know where to go, what to do. 
or we, we really need to take our biggest donors on a very special trip. Or, well, we, you know, we have this gardening organization and we want to do something different, go someplace new, especially during the winter when there's not much garden. You know what I'm saying? There'll be a cue to an opportunity, John. And, and that's how it works. It's a, it's a truly organic process. Now, I'll give you a couple of quick case and points. I'm going to move on. Uh, I did, I sent an email and you know what? I'm happy to show you the words I used to all the general managers of all the hotels here in Memphis. Why? Because I want to get more speaking business, but you can't sell yourself. So I'm looking to make friends. So I said, Hey, I'm a member of the convention and visitors bureau too. They said it was okay that I let you know, uh, that I'm, I'm also a member and I just wanted to meet you and get, get to learn about your business. And out of the, I think I sent out 25 so far, uh, I have, I got three bites. One said, thank you for introducing yourself, don't need your services now. And mind you, I wasn't selling anything, but now I have a connection. Number two, somebody said, this is great, uh, I, I would love to meet you, but I'm relocating, give me a call in two weeks. But the number one opportunity I have is, uh, this guy's taking me out for lunch. He's the general manager of Big Cypress Lodge. Big Cypress Lodge is the hotel, the upscale hotel in the Bass Pro Shops, the Pyramid, which is, you know, which is a landmark now, an icon. And he's eager to meet me because he sees what I do. I was selling and I want to meet him. He said, come, let me take you for lunch. I'm like, yeah. So that's the way it works. And for all I know, he could say, you know, we have an annual staff meeting, Stuart. Maybe I can help. Or maybe he could say, you know, we have a lot of conferences here. If anybody needs you, you know, what do you talk about? What do you do? That's how it works organically. I do this stuff all the time. I have a meeting next week with another business coach, a very, very successful business owner. Uh, and I said, hey, you got 15 minutes for a cup of coffee? He said, absolutely. I'll give you more than that. I've heard your name in town. Let's get together. That's next week. I do this all the time, and it brings me... Not only new friends, but new business. I hope that helps. So do what's comfortable. Don't sell anything. Just go meet people, ask them a lot of questions, and somebody is going to have a problem that can be solved with group travel. Um, Karen, I had that happen, and now we're dealing with the consequences, and it's with friends, which makes it worse. Now I have just figured out how and I should have how I should have handled it. So thank you, Karen, for sharing. So basically, Karen is commenting on. Uh, the opportunity that Sherry has right now, which is uh, a, a friend who said, give me, give me, give me price, price, price. And Karen did, but now dealing with the consequences. You see, so now we have hindsight. Karen is sharing anecdotal evidence. I love using that phrase. That, that sometimes when... We move so fast, we're so excited, we get caught up in the rush of new business and helping a friend that it comes out back to bite us. And, and Karen uses the word consequences. So perhaps Karen, can, maybe you can share the, what the consequences were, what you will do differently, what you've learned in the Facebook group, or I could turn your microphone on too and share that. So you don't hear it from me, you know, we hear it from Karen. Again, a hindsight perspective. Uh, let's see here. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Thank you. Judy wished us a happy anniversary. Yes. Um, okay. Let's see. Gina, there are some suppliers that no longer book through Costco. I will also tell clients that inquire that I do custom groups and do not. And I, when, when I go like this, <laughs> that means you've put it in all caps. <laughs> uh, read it again. I will also tell clients that inquire that I do custom groups and do not compete with the likes of Costco. If you're looking for a vacation based on price alone, I'm not your person. Man, Gina, that's bold. That's beautiful. That's making a statement. If you want me, come to me. Here's what I'm all about. I am not, I'm not about that. And we got to hold true to who we are or else we end up getting suckered in. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Please don't take it negatively. But we feel like, oh, my gosh, what have I just done? But I need the business. I need the numbers. But, oh, what have I just done? Because it ends up distracting you from other more profitable business. 
Hans shares, I think at some time it would be helpful to go through the process of selling up sample, setting up sample group packages, such as a river cruise package or a cruise package. Just a thought. So to go through the process of setting up sample group packages. So like an exercise. So that's interesting. Is that something, Hans, that you think we could do here as a group, as an exercise? Um, I know I do, I do, companies hire me to do live summits, and sometimes we do stuff like that, but we've never actually done that in boot camp. Would that be an interesting exercise, and we all share and give ideas? But just one giant sort of mastermind session. Interesting, Hans. I like that a lot. John says, Mazel Tov, thank you on the engagement of my daughter. Appreciate that. Danny's in the house. Hello, Danny. Idea, do a role play uh, where this, uh, with this, where you are the buyer with a group and a boot camper interviews you for your business. Might build some confidence. Yes, Hans, great idea. Danny, great idea. Thank you, Dan. We're going to do it. We're absolutely going to do it. We're going to do some role playing. You know why I love role playing? Because it gives, uh, uh, it, whether you guys do it with each other or I'm, I'm, the, I'm the buyer or whatever, you know, it's fun. But also you can say, wait, let me try that again. Wait, let me try that again. Role playing is a very powerful way of creating a new comfort zone. John, you expressed before that, you know, it's, it, it's stepping outside your comfort zone knocking on doors and trying to sell, sell your you know, group concepts and so forth. But you're okay going to a network event and shaking hands, making friends. Well, role playing helps us bridge that gap so that it's not a, we're not stepping outside of our comfort zone per se, but we're stepping inside a new one. And only we can do that. Only we can do that. Lynn said, should Sherry try to get everyone on the phone to qualify needs, someone from each part of the family, or just decision makers? How to find out who they are. Lynn, great point. Absolutely, 100%. I agree. Because as I, as I was saying this in retrospect, you, you do, you, there's no way you can get everybody. But I would say representatives from various families. 100% agree. Because if you do have everybody, guess what happens? You're going to get, if you have all 30 people online, you're going to get 30 different ideas. And I want this, I don't want this. And that could be overwhelming. So perhaps Sherry can go back to the friend and say, listen, give me, I need some representatives from the family members. So, you know, the group of, who would you consider the board, uh, the, the decision makers in the group here? That's who we need to get on the call. You know, at the end of the day too, Lynn, to your, to your point, you can ask for everybody and everyone's got a life going on. They may be busy and might not be able to show up, but you can still put it out there. And even if they can't come, they may be grateful. Hey, I was invited. I can't participate. Will it be recorded? So, you know, maybe it's not so bad in a situation like this. If it was much bigger, no, because it's not an organization that has defined leaders. A family reunion mate, you know, putting the invitation out there, you're going to get some who can come, some who can't. You just pick the date, you just do it, and then you record it and you play it back and and and, and you open up feedback. And, and Sherry, you might even want to, if they allow you to do that, start a private Facebook group. Listen, everybody, who does this? We've talked about this. I did it for my river cruise. Start a private Facebook group just for their group. And if the group doesn't materialize, it's out, it's over. You can close it. But at least say, hey, listen, friends, if you uh, we're going to have this big call. If you, if you can't make the call, post your questions and comments here. And so we can keep the dialogue going. What a beautiful way to begin engaging with these people and to get them on your list, too, even if the group doesn't happen. You're welcome, Jan. She said, thanks for the great advice. Judy says, we've all been there and we may still be doing that sometime, even after 35 years plus. So Judy says that uh, and this, let this be comforting to you, Sherry. That Judy in the business, 35 years plus, it happens to Judy. It happens to everybody. It happens to me. And it, it just, it is what it is. But the more experience we get and then we use our coaches and our mentors, we take a deep breath before we take an action. Sometimes we can uh, evolve. We get smarter as we go. We learn a little bit more each year. Isn't that our goal in life? is to grow, is to evolve, is just to get a little bit smarter every day. Nancy says, 
at such networking events, uh, often, uh, you're, you're, you're a travel agent. Really, I've stopped calling myself a travel agent. I'm a travel advisor, small group tour coordinator, and leader, an inspiring explorer. I now respond with, you may think so, but I'm thriving, helping people reduce risk and stress, value and convenience, and make sure your experience is great. So, and I know I kind of read this up jumbled, but thank you, Nancy, for sharing this. Uh, and, and, you know, Nancy is sharing here that she, she doesn't even use the word travel agent anymore because it, it's a risk that they may have a negative connotation or understand what you do. And she stopped calling herself travel agent. She says travel advisor. I'm going to paraphrase now. Or small group tour coordinator, leader inspiring explorer. I'm on Nancy's list. I get her emails her monthly, I think it's monthly emails about all the places she goes and she's in every picture. Nancy's in every picture with the people having a great time with big smiles. Nancy, I love your stuff. You do an amazing work. And every once in a while, share it in boot camp to inspire us, us too. Right. So I think this is beautiful. And the fact that Nancy uses those words boldly, that, that I tell you guys what, what your role is as, as, as agents, as advisors, as transformers. Carolyn says, I agree 100 percent. If you're not in control, they will not respect you going forward and it will become a nightmare, 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 nightmare. <laughs> Carolyn says uh, that she is a CCRA. OK, and she's going to go to the next training, uh, sales training next week. Okay, so that's good. Beautiful. And she says, build relationships and ask, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? Don't sell what you want to sell. What do you need from me? How can I help? What do you need? Uh, by the way, I got a, an email. Here's about, here's about a job I did not get. Out of the blue, I got an email from the president CEO of the Orpheum Theater Group here. Now, Orpheum is, of course, one of the, the biggest, uh, most magnificent uh, um, theaters. And uh, it was right around the corner. It wanted uh, me to come in and, and do some uh, training, service training for the whole company at their annual retreat, which was yesterday. And uh, I didn't get the job. Uh, we had a great conversation to get the job because uh, he found somebody in the board of the directors who does training for another very, very well facility, and they offered to come do it uh, at no charge. So he said, I, I can't beat this offer. I said, no, you can't. That's great. So instead of expressing disappointment, I said, hey, man, that's great. I sent a congratulatory email the day of the event. Best of success with your big retreat today. And he wrote back, thanks, Stuart. And after he get this, after he told me I did not get the job two weeks back, I sent him a thank you note. Not because I got the job, I didn't, but because he thought of me. He called me and I look forward to, to meeting him, taking him out for coffee so I can learn more about him and the organization. Because I'm a big, I'm a client of his. I go to the Orpheum all the time. So I have no doubt at some point his name or he is going to come up again in my future, just not today. Karen said, John could also ask that question you mentioned last week. What special occasions are on your horizon? Thank you, Karen. Yeah, so so John, I mean, these are these key words that are easy to remember and say, hey, what special events are on your horizon or what special occasions? And it could, it could end up be, being a business event or a personal event. And maybe group travel isn't the solution. But thank you, Karen, for reminding me to remind everybody that, John, that's a great question to ask when you're networking. Uh, Nancy said, yes, please share your email with, uh, with invitation to meet. Uh, please share your email with invitation to meet. I don't know what that means. Help me. Uh-oh. You're welcome, John. I'm talking so fast here. Here we go. Um, Wakisa uh, has a question. What are your opinions on CLIA meetings at C training program? I want to go to this route and I want to go this route and promote concerts with a promoter buddy, but need more information on chips, logistics, or is the alternate training you can recommend at C? So uh, I, all I can say is I 
haven't seen one of these CLIA uh, training meetings at seen a long, long time. I don't know. I'm not qualified to give you that. I'm going to ask everybody in the group here, have any of you watching right now or watching the replay ever uh, attended a CLIA meeting at C? What do you think? Does it work? Again, I want to read this. Uh, Wakisa says, I want to go this route and promote concerts with a promoter. That's a different. I'm going to address that in a second. So uh, I, I want to know if you guys recommend this. Should she go? And I also want, want to make a comment about this uh, concerts at sea. And we've talked about this a while ago. But I just want to tell you that, that sure, these, these could be a great opportunity. But uh, logistically, they're very, very operationally difficult to do. And I know this from experience. I, uh, Jason Bukema, you guys know Jason Bukema? He is now one of the most successful ship charter guys in the music business and in our industry. Okay. It's called the Groove Cruise. And um, little old me was his business coach way back when, when he, when he was just doing large groups. And whatever role I played in helping him uh, do his first charter. I helped uh, put the, you know, negotiate the contract, all this kind of stuff on the back end directly with him. He's an incredibly ambitious, extremely driven, very bright young man. And 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 watching how he dealt with bringing on DJs with equipment versus bands. Then I also worked with with other groups because remember I worked for celebrity. But remember I've been I've worked with agents all my life that the logistics of bringing bands on with equipment is very, very difficult. Now, are the cruise lines ready to deal with you and tell you how it works, how it won't by now? Absolutely. But just be prepared for these logistical questions, okay? And make sure that whatever band or promoter you're using has a really, really, really big following. They need to have a big following because if you're going to commit to give the whole band free cabins, blah, 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 which is dangerous, then they need to have skin in the game of promoting it through their big, big list of people who need to love the band enough, the musicians enough, to actually travel with them. And will the, will everybody in the band stay on the whole time if it's on a ship? Sometimes they get on and get off. Sometimes they stay the whole week. So there's a lot of details around this. I'm excited for you to explore it. Uh, Sam. You want your mic on? Absolutely. All right. Hang on just a second. Uh, let me go through these. Hang on. Oh, boy. You know what, Sam? Let's go to you right now um, And because we've got seven minutes left, and I, I am so grateful that you want your mic on. Hang on a second, everybody. I'm going to find you. Sam, I assume you're still ready. If not, you don't have to take the uh, – uh, you got to wait a second. It froze. Yep. Just give me a second there. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Still frozen. I got to wait. Uh, Carolyn says, good job, Gina. So she's complimenting you. Uh, so I'm just waiting for this to unfreeze, guys. Uh, Nancy says, um, can you post what Gina said on Facebook? Yes, absolutely. I can post what Gina said on Facebook. You got it. All right, Sam, I'm going to try you again. Here we go. Unmute Sam. All right, Sam, I hope this is okay. You ready to go? I'm ready. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I have a couple of comments, but I'll be real quick. Um, I was in a similar situation with someone approaching me about an Alaska cruise group last year, right after Thanksgiving. Uh, long story short, we met for breakfast, and we decided we needed to gauge the interest in her group. Mm -hmm. uh, and she wanted to take that on herself. And I said, OK, then we'll get together after the holidays and see what kind of interest you have in your group. Um, she contacted me or I contacted her after the holidays and she said she had 36 couples interested okay. in our Alaska group. And about two thirds of those said they would be ready to put down a deposit. Um, unfortunately, right now they've been hit with the flu, her family. so. Oh. 
we can't get together, but our next step is going to be to select the crews. We haven't even selected a cruise yet. Mm. And then we'll do the group launch sequence. Okay. Um, and this was to celebrate a 60th birthday. And okay. she also decided uh, to set the cruise back a bit because she said, I realize there's more to this than just everyone putting down a deposit. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to be moving forward with that. Um, I liked Han's idea. Yeah. And I was at a chamber annual meeting this weekend. And yeah. it was interesting because they have changed their pricing. Traditionally, they have started with a $100 membership based on the number of employees. They have yeah. now gone to a tier membership where the lowest price is $275 up to $5,000. And again, to make a long story short, um, yeah. before 386 people bought in at the $100 membership. Mm -hmm. When they went to tier pricing, only 26 people chose the lowest price on up to five people taking the $5,000 membership. And in between, they had, uh, was, were the majority going the mid range of about $2,500 to $2,800 membership. And the difference was the value that they added to the membership. Mm -hmm. Instead of nickel and diming their members after, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, to, will you support this event? Will you put signage up, you know, and we charge a fee for that? Or mm -hmm. we'll do this marketing for $150. Now they have created these tier levels where you can decide what level yep. you want yep. and what you want to participate in. Yep. So uh, to me, that translated to the travel business. And it kind of reminds me of what Hans is talking about, creating yep. different packages, yep. uh, probably with different features and benefits to it. Very inspirational what you've just shared with us, Sam. It proves so many things. It proves that people will pay. Yes. For more convenience. It proves that people will pay a whole lot more. It proves that the, the, the opportunity for, in this case, the chamber, but for a business to, to do this kind of stuff uh, really, really does work. People pay for convenience. People pay to have less stress, stress and risk and more value. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and uh, let, let that be inspiring for, for all of us as, as uh, solopreneurs that people will pay more. But if they don't know, if they don't, if they're not offered that, I like to call it supersizing opportunity, you know, you pay a little bit more and get a whole lot more, then they'll never do it. They'll never think of it themselves. But if you put it out there, they might just buy it. Thank you for sharing both stories. Yeah, and, and best as far as Gina's, Gina's comment, I do mm -hmm. a similar thing. Um, I say I personalize my travel experiences for yeah. my clients. Yeah. So it, you yeah. And when you get that Costco comment, which I just hate. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> that's good. No, the word personalized, customized, one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one relationship. There's some really, really great buzzwords. And that's what you're comfortable with, Sam. Everyone needs to, and John, everybody, get comfortable with the buzzwords that work for you. You know? Exactly. Thanks, Sam. You're welcome. Bye. I'm going to put you back on mute. Very cool. I love it. Um, so we got a lot of positive comments here. Jan says it'd be very cool to go through the group package process. I love it. Gina says, can we do a boot camp summit? Imagine the energy. I know. I've been thinking about doing one in Memphis here. Honest to goodness. So I'm thinking of doing one in Memphis. This is for real. It would be an enormous amount of work. But doing one in Memphis because, of course, I'm part of the Bureau. So maybe we could do some fun touring stuff too. For those of you who are already in boot camp, uh, it would be a, a, a nominal cost because you're already in boot camp, and then there could be others who, if they they they'll pay the boot camp fee plus. So not only do they come to the live event, but they can also join boot camp, so they get everything. You know, um, I don't know. You guys want to do it? I'm up for it. Uh, you do it on a ship too? I don't know. We could do it anywhere, but I don't know. I love Memphis. Come here. It's fun. Uh, oh my goodness, we've got 60 seconds. So here's, I'm going to tell you guys something. If there's stuff I didn't get to, which I think there is, I promise you I will post it in our Facebook group so we can talk about it. I don't want you to think your comments and your typing have been wasted. They have not. Uh, Kathy, hi Kathy, says, Hans' comment may have meant, and I like the idea of example of how you customize. What do you include? T uh, trips, t-shirts, on board or, or online cocktail parties. What do you include that may get, that you may not get elsewhere? Yeah, I agree, Kathy, and it's something I'm going to do. The two things, Hans's comment on, on coming up with the, 
with sort of fake packages, but not really fake because they're going to give us great ideas. And number two, doing some role playing. Uh, Judy says, I also think we should all come to Nashville for actually role playing, networking ideas, thoughts. How about it, Stuart? Now, yeah, you wrote Nashville before I said Memphis. Uh, will you come to Memphis? Uh, it's a much more accessible city, Memphis. Nashville is going to cost us a fortune. It's very crowded. I love Nashville, but I love Memphis even more. Uh, final one from Karen. Hindsight. What should I have said to my friend was, let's slow this train down. I'm thrilled you are excited about going on this cruise for Anne's birthday. They knew exactly what ship and sailing they wanted to do and pricing in the cabins. Here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and book the cabins to secure the pricing, but let me meet with Anne and sit down and determine what else we might want. So that was Karen's response of hindsight, what she would do the next time. And I'm going to print that in Facebook, Karen, if that's okay with you. I honor your time. I start on time and I end on time. I promise you I will follow up in our boot camp page. Thanks everybody for being here. Happy sales.